Good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to tonight's um, health and well-being um, study that we go through. Today, we've got the privilege of having Tanisha Berger with us, who's currently a student at Cardiff University. She's studying medicine and in her fourth year. Um, it's a privilege to have you with us, Tanisha. Thanks. Um, I've, I've known you from, from Birmingham days. Hendreth Church, so it's good to have you with us today on the, the Zoom chat. And you'll also, this session will also go on the YouTube channel. Today's topic, Tanisha is going to be presenting to us, is time management. Um, it's something that's important. And we, it's, it's also something that we've realized had quite an impact during the whole lockdown situation. Um, people probably were, people weren't expecting time management to be affected the way that it was. I'm guessing when you're working and you're at home, things get things do change. So, Tanisha, do you want to just say a few words before we open with a word of prayer, and then I'll hand over to you? Definitely. Um, I I agree with what you just said in terms of just the way time and the recognition of it was made apparent during COVID, especially, and how plans were definitely disrupted. And I think hopefully today, it's not me just saying expert advice on time management, but more just my personal experience and how I'd say I've used different experiences and different encounters just to better manage my time, I guess. So yeah, I'm just saying thank you for the opportunity, really. Yeah. Privilege to have you with us. Let's open with a word of prayer and then Tanisha, I hand straight over to you. Definitely. Great. Dear Lord, we thank you um, for the opportunity right now to have this discussion, this presentation on time management, something that can be so easily overlooked, but it's so very important. Uh, you are a God of order. You said let everything be done decently and in order. Time, we see, is something that's important to you. As you said, that seven-day week cycle, and you blessed us with that Sabbath day, which is holy time specifically to be dedicated to you. But in the week as we venture on, whether it's through work, study, or we're at home, time, we can't escape it, yet it leaves us so quickly. I pray, Lord, that as Tanisha presents on time management today, that she'll, um, you'll guide us through her with a number of tools and skills and hearing her own life experience with time management as well. So we thank you for this moment in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Just before you do take over, yes. Tanisha, um, I just want to let you all know, those of you that are watching, um, you can ask your questions. So we'll be keeping an eye on the chat as well and we do have some questions ready to go through also so um yeah do post any questions that you have in the chat section and we'll do our best to answer them tanisha over to yep. you so as craig said i'm tanisha and today i'll be presenting on time management okay just a few fun facts about me um since the age of six actually after talking to my mom i've owned a watch um the car clock in, well, the clock in my car is set 10 minutes fast, actually. I have several, at least three, um, morning alarms just to get me going. I don't have a set bedtime. And since school, I've always used the planner and the diary. So just a few objectives, just to, I guess, quantify what I'm talking about today. And I think it's important everyone's aware of what's happening. So firstly, I'd like to address that time management is lifelong. And it's something that I'm definitely developing and evolving over time. The second thing I'd like to address is just my 10 top tips. And I put mine in bold because for those of you that are here, you probably hold time management quite dearly, um, but there's so many different ways to manage time. And so these are the, just the 10 top tips I've found that have been useful for my journey. And thirdly, just an opportunity to tweak what you might already have in place or something you might want to add to your certain schedule. So I start with the first objective, time management. So it's lifelong, and these next few slides will just explain why I believe so. so. Firstly, first disclaimer. So in first year, we had January exams, and just to adapt my revision approach, I wanted to do morning revision, actual early morning revision. So I woke up at five um, and revised for an hour for three mornings uh, in a row, but I didn't find that useful for me. So this was a learning opportunity and doing some research around time management, I learned that this is called peak productivity, meaning when is the best time you work, whether it be at night, in the afternoon, what environment is best for you, are you listening to music? So this is something I'll elaborate on later, but 
this was a learning point for me. A second encounter, as you can see here, was when I was getting a train. So I was visiting a friend in Liverpool and I needed to return to uni on the Sunday. Um, but unfortunately, one of my trains were canceled. Um, so I had to get a, an alternative route, but that meant I had to stay in Chester for around an hour or so. Um, there's many ways this time could have been spent, uh, listening to music, finding some place to doze, eating, etc. But I, fortunately, there was an area where you could uh, sit inside, like an indoor waiting area. And I had my laptop with me and I just used that time just to do a bit of work. So this is what I call fill in the blanks. So there's always space, like small spaces, so just blank small spaces that if empty, there's not a loss in time, but if you make the use of that time, you could potentially be more productive. Uh, thirdly, I love netball. So this encounter or this experience wasn't too long ago prior to lockdown. Um, we had a netball match, but I was getting a lift from a, a friend. It was the usual spot, um, but she was running late. So normally I just dress in like normal gear and then get changed on court um, after my warm up. So I set up my track suits on. I didn't have my actual match trainers on. Uh, we arrived a minute before the game. So fortunately I was able to get into my dress, but I didn't get, have enough time to get my trainers on. Meaning I couldn't get on court for the first until the opponent had scored. Now this is an, a, a tip I've called your circle. So that's a netball pun, but meaning who's in your circle? Are the people you're surrounded by, um, do they make you late? Are you the late one? Do they value time as you do? Are they productive with the time they have? So that's another tip of mine, which I hope to explain further. And finally, just a few more examples of why I believe time management is something that is ever changing rather than a set strategy in a point in time. But at uni, we have several tutorials on group work. And this is where, especially in medicine, there's case-based learning. So you're given a case and you're asked to just bring ideas to the table. What could be wrong? What could be the diagnosis? How would you manage this patient? And there's normally a group of 12 with a doctor or another facilitator in the setting. Um, and then you meet again probably a week later, um, leaving with objectives and tasks that you need to do. Um, but I found that sometimes there are a few people that are held responsible for certain tasks. When there's a group of 12, it might just be three people responsible for completing an assignment. And this is where the importance of delegation came to mind and how by managing time, by giving or offsetting responsibility, you have more opportunity to make the time yours. So hopefully this presentation will explain why those tips and more um, have made me like a student who I, I believe is able to manage time to an extent, able to work and enjoy friends and activities whilst at uni. So that's the first objective. If anything else, I'd hope that you realize that I'm not an expert at all in time management, but more so recognizing that it's something that evolves over time. And once you recognize that, I'm sure that you become more product productive as time goes on. So I'll give you a moment to read that. And if I do have your attention, let me do continue. Okay, so my 10 top tips. Firstly, as I addressed earlier, who's in your circle? I, I put this first because it's, it actually is quite important to me. Uh, my parents do say, show me who your friends are, because that does define you. So the circle you're surrounded by does impact how you either behave, how you perceive life, what your dreams are. Um, this actual, this quote came, I came across before this presentation, but I thought it was quite fitting. So if you look at the people in your circle and don't get inspired, then you don't have a circle, you have a cage. So just in relation to time management, um, if your best friend's always late, or if your family, your family name, or just family members are always known to be late for an event, or if your squad at uni, you're always boasting about you submitting an assignment minutes before the deadline, is that a circle you believe are inspiring you to be better at time management, be more productive with your time? Or is that a cage where you're trapped in a certain cycle of bad habits? So for me, I always, not as in reevaluating friendships, not at all, but just try and surround myself with people that inspire me and make me think, you don't always need to be active, so that's not what I'm saying, but more so how to use your time effectively, whether that be exercising, reading around a topic, or simply just doing self-care and just enjoying you. But just, that's a big one for me. So if I elaborate on this earlier, I came across this again ages ago before this presentation, but this behavior, I believe needs to change. So this is your friendship circle where you laugh about being 20, minute late, 20 minutes late to a party, or again, um, submit an assignment an hour before the deadline. 
then that might be something to reevaluate and just mature in terms of how best to manage time. So are your friends time conscious? Are you time conscious? Are you punctual? Do you, uh, are you committed to being to an event or a certain setting on time or would you rather turn up late? In doing so, are you motivated doing that? Do your friends motivate you to be better? At the same time, not people that just are always studying or always academic or always trying to achieve acad academic dreams, but able to enjoy their time. So can they have fun? Who, basically, who's around you? Are they valuing their time both, both rest, not always up? I found that sometimes as teenagers and even as young adults, we can not really value the time or value sleep. So are your circle conscious of that as well? So that's my first tip. Hopefully that makes sense. And if there are any questions, do, do ask Craig because I can't see it at the moment. Second tip, this is also quite important for me. Prioritise prioritising, um, meaning that exactly. So what's important to you? What needs to be done today? What needs to be done by next week? So for example, this presentation itself needed to be done. So I couldn't wait the night before to do it. This was a priority. So other things that might have been on the list might have been replaced and, or substituted. But I found in order to do this, the use of checklists, as the image might suggest. And I have, I think that comes from school days. So we had a planner and you'd write your homework task and then once completed your tick, literally that simple. Um, and I don't know, I think it just ingrained over time or that, that, that activity itself or doing that, there's some satisfaction in doing that. So now when I complete a task and I tick it off, it's, it's, I'm conditioned, I guess, to feeling a certain way once that task is complete. So it might be something different for you. It might be a post-it. And then once that task is done, you scrunch it up and throw it away. There's different ways to list what you need to do. But what I'm merely suggesting is writing out tasks and prioritizing what's important to you. And a motto of mine is, if it's important to you, or get done. So I'll let you interpret that as you wish. But this quote might help. You're not too busy, it's just a matter of priorities. So again, checklists, as I've said, that's a big deal for me. So in my diary, academic diary, calendar, um, there's a few tasks in a day or even just within a week that I know needs to be achieved before the next week. And then again, that's ranked rather important. But I think also it's important to be realistic with the task itself. So if I give an example, fortunately in second year, there's a bit of a mishap with the toilet flush handle. So I somehow uh, it broke when I pressed the handle and the task itself was to replace the handle. Now that is not realistic at all. For someone else that might be, but I called my dad, I had no idea what I was doing. So that immediately, that would never have been ticked. But by, again, by doing bite-sized tasks, so by researching where can I get a toilet flush handle, that would have been the first task. Uh, YouTube videos on replacing a toilet flush handle. Um, another task would have been calling my landlord, telling him that the toilet flush handle broke. So by breaking down the task, I then was able to complete the task. And actually I did, I did replace the toilet flush handle. It was only five pounds. And by looking at YouTube videos, I was able to fix that mishap. But by simply putting replace the toilet flush handle, that is not realistic in the slightest. So that's something I'd also reiterate. Be realistic with the task. And most importantly, be specific. So if I relate back to studying, for some of us, we might just write revise. I remember doing that earlier on in my uh, studying journey and that, that never got ticked off to revise. It actually doesn't mean anything. But if you write revise, for, for me example, revise the management of high blood pressure, then that in itself is a bite-sized task which can be done within an hour. And then by doing so, once completed, I can tick it off. So hopefully that makes sense, but prioritize prioritizing by either listing checklists, but using those few pieces of advice just to make it more proactive. You know, before you move on, mm -hmm. you know the point that you mentioned with like the checklists. Yes. And you said like you use a diary. Have you ever mm -hmm. any applications or, or? Right. Um. So doing research onto this, actually, I do realize there's so many. I think there's an app for everything. Clearly, with technology mm -hmm. these days, but I can't say I do. Um. I think for me, I've always liked pen and paper. Mm -hmm. So I recognize that many people have a calendar on their phone and even laptop now, which I do utilize because it does give alarms and notifications. But in terms of checklists itself, I, I definitely do write it. So I can't recommend at all an app, but I think that's a good point. So if there's, if there's a way of interactivity that, you, that, that appeals to you, so if it's technology, then I'd definitely say pursue something like that because then it will get done. 
So if you, I know on, um, if I look at my tablet, um, laptop now, I know there's an app on Apple, like to-do list, I believe. So you literally, it has its own checklist. So you can write, you can type it there and it can probably give you alarms. So I think that's a good point. So utilize what's out there. If pen and paper is not for you, or if you're going to lose the paper, the post that goes missing, then that might not be a proactive way for you. But for me, just writing in a diary, that's, like I said earlier, that's since I've done, since school days. So that's something I know works for me. And I just, like I was saying, I don't know if it sounds weird at all, but the satisfaction of literally ticking, I don't know, it, it feels good. <laughs> so yeah, that's what motivates me because I know I want to remove the task off the list. Mm. So find what motivates you, find what works for you, whether it's the app, knowing you've got an alarm and then once it's done, you might get a notification saying complete, that might satisfy you. But yeah, no, I, have, I can't save you for that. Okay, cool, thank you. No worries. Okay, so tip number three. Again, as I mentioned earlier about the importance of time management, ma management means something that you evolve. This is about delegation. Now, this was an interesting one when just preparing for this presentation because talking, talking about time management and just the importance of taking, making the most of opportunities, um, by saying no or passing on a, on a responsibility, in a sense, you could argue that you're not utilizing that responsibility, um, opportunity that someone's giving you or you're missing out on something. But I found even just researching this that by passing on or simply saying these few things, if we read them now, if I just read the screen slightly, I don't have enough time. Um, I'm busy working, not this time. Yeah, not today. That doesn't fit into my schedule. Um, unfortunately, I'm unavailable. Have you asked so and so? Or I won't be able to do it. Uh, that's no for me. Sometimes you might just have to do that clear. Or only if you ask me sooner. So I found that a few of these phrases have helped because if you try and juggle too much, the quality of each product that you do make might decrease. So you do need to know how much time you have and how much time you can juggle. So this is by no means saying um, we should be saying no. It's just more saying learn when to. So by prioritizing, which was tip number two, you'll know whether you're able to, for example, go on a trip with your friends or complete this assignment, which one's the priority. And this weekend, it might not be able, you might not be able to go on a trip with your friends. So that's when you might have to say no. So that, I think for me, this is something I'm learning as in, I like to be active. That's something that was just, we brought up with just being able to utilize different skills. But at the same time, it's important to know how precious time is and it's your time and it's not something you can actually get back. So as the second bullet point just says, you've got to protect your time. So asking for help, delegating, passing on responsibility here and there might be extremely useful. And again, this might link to tip number one in terms of your circle. Utilize those who, who are around you. So your family, your friends, your colleagues, just assign responsibility. It might be, for example, when we had, a, fortunately we were able to go to Portugal last year with some uni friends. So if it was just two of us planning the holiday, it might not have been as successful or even as enjoyable. But by one person looking at flights, one person looking at accommodation, the other person looking at activities, the other person just looking at the total the overall area, whether it's safe, whether we should go to that accommodation choice, then the whole package was complete within a matter of weeks. Whereas if this was on me or one of my friends, then something else would have been compromised. So don't just say no, but as you evolve with time management, just learn when to. I think that's the important part of this one. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, tip number four. Right, use it wisely. So there's a nice quote I came across when preparing for this presentation. Time stays long enough for anyone who will use it. Now, I found the best way to expl explain this point was through um, scriptures. So if, I don't know if anyone has a Bible accessible to them, but I read the three scriptures I found that were extremely useful. Give me a second. Okay, so Proverbs 28 verse eight, uh, 19, it reads, those who work their land will have abundant food, but those who chase fantasies will have their fill of poverty. Um, Proverbs, as we know, is fill, filled with wise words. And I think the next two scriptures I describe, um, explain or read, will explain that. But simply, if we don't use our time, there'll be no productivity from it. Um, so as this one just says, those who work their land will have abundant food, meaning what you put in, you will reap. Um, but at the same time, I'm not saying, and hopefully it doesn't cross, come across as saying, you always need to fill your time. So by simply watching a movie, reading your favorite book, um, writing poems, whatever you enjoy doing, 
that's using time. But I think what I'm saying is don't be idle. Um, so idle isn't, means, isn't sleeping or just lounging around because sometimes you need to relax. But if that's all you're doing with your time, then in my opinion, this is just my opinion, that I don't think it's being used wisely. Proverbs 14 verse 23. All hard work brings a profit, but mere talk leads only to poverty. Again, um, hard work. So what you put in, um, if you're just simply talking, if it's just a fantasy, it's something that you want to do, but you're not actually putting in the work for it, then it might not be achieved. And Proverbs 15 verse 19, again, um, builds on that. The way of a sluggard is blocked with thorns, but the path of the upright is a highway. So I might use these, I'm, these might be my new mottos in a sense, just to help me to pursue dreams that might at first seem unachievable, but by doing small steps and using the time wisely, it can definitely be achieved. So hopefully that makes sense. So just use it wisely, don't be idle is basically what I'm getting at. Right, as Craig was saying earlier, this has been, this well, coronavirus has proven that we have to be adaptable and flexible. Um, for, for me personally, uh, uni was basically converted to online within a matter of weeks. And for medicine, initially that didn't, that didn't make sense, basically. I don't see how you can have placement um, online. So what they were trying to do is, in the GP setting at least, have a three-way consultation. So with the GP, the student, medic, and then the patient um, on the screen. Um, and that's something you have to adapt to. So you can't be rigid. So you might have a set plan. So for me, it was just to finish placement and get the most out of it, but that was, well, was cancelled. So how could I then be flexible and use the time I was given? Because um, fortunately, I was able to come home and spend it with my family. How could I use that time and just be creative? So just a few examples, really. In the last few months, I've now um, started writing poems again, which I love doing. Um, before I became really busy. Uh, I might have set exercise plans, which I might not have had time to do at uni. So again, what I'm saying here is don't be too rigid. Be, be prepared to restart. Again, I think that's what's quite comforting about having it on paper. So you just cross out a plan, just strike through it and restart, write a new one. And get creative. So we might have set routines, but some things have to change. Um, and it's whether you're willing to change. And if not, that's when time management might become more um, lacking or lax in terms of how well you can manage time if you're not willing to adapt to it. And simply, if you're in your circle and everyone's late, how do you adapt to that? So you might have been planning to go and watch a movie and everyone has arrived half an hour late. What happens next? So I think that's something, a skill that everyone has. It's just how enhan enhanced it has, has been might affect how well you can manage your time. Tip number six, that's what I was talking about earlier. So peak productivity. I think that's quite an important one. And it's, um, I won't be too scientific, but too scientific, let's be correct. But um, the chronotypes, that's just merely saying uh, whether you're a night owl or a morning lark. So do you work best in the night or mid afternoon or really early in the morning? And I established from trying to do early morning revision that I'm more of a night owl. In addition, in order to be most effective when working, what environment is that? Is that the library for you? Is it in your home? Is it in a friend's setting when your friends are around? Are you listening to music? Um, so find an environment and stick to it, and then that's when you're most effective. Is it power naps? I have heard a few people say they nap for seven minutes. Now, I can't explain much about that. I, mean, I don't nap, so I can't. Um, support that at all but if that if that works for you then definitely do it polyphasic sleeping so I came across that actually by doing research and um, Leonardo da Vinci actually um, conducted this so he only really slept in total for two to three hours a day but would sleep intermittently and then work so if that works for you if you have the opportunity to do that um, consider it or merely just Think about your sleep patterns. That's, that's another way of being as productive as you can be. Um, if you wake up early, can you do a bit here and then come back from work, do a bit there? Um, so think when, when is your peak? So when, when do you work the best? And is it when you've just eaten? Or uh, you've eaten at lunch and then two hours later, just in case the food itself just affects your um, brain power, etc. So just 
evaluate your peak productivity. I can't tell you when you work best, but I think it's important to address just to get better at managing time. Uh, tip number seven, so routine. Uh, although I did, I think number five, it, I did mention about adaptab adaptability and flexibility. Uh, with, an, with anything, there should be routine. And that's something that I value quite dearly. So although, as we've discussed, things will change, um, you have to be adaptable. There are some things that you can always do. You can always start the day with prayer. And for some who don't, um, they might notice that if they forget to pray of that rush, that their day might not start the way they want to or normally will. Or you might always have to have breakfast. Um, otherwise, you might have a bad start to the day. So find the things that are habitual to you or things that you can't compromise and make sure that you get to do them, make it your routine because it can cause stress and frustration. Um, and by doing so, it provides focus. So being able to do the things that you always do, it knows that you're in control to an extent and you, you won't be stressed or um, rushed around because you haven't done this or you haven't had time to do this. So I do believe it does optimize your efficiency. So for me, I prefer to do my devotion in the evening. So that's something I endeavor to do every day. Um, at the same time, I try and have breakfast. Um, I do like to do exercise in the morning just to get off to a good start. Like simply everyone, I believe, has a shower in the morning. So that's something that's your routine. If you don't, you might feel completely different or the day hasn't started as it ought to. So everyone does have a routine, but I think this hopefully tip will allow you to highlight what that is and allow you to continue to do it just so that time management is something that you can p further um, develop over time. Okay, tip number eight. This is probably one that everyone might have mentioned, but manage your distractions. So I did come across a, a quote again doing this research. It's not time management, it's attention management. So in essence, everyone can manage time, but can you manage your attention span? Um, and that, that comes with dis discipline, I think. So for me, in terms of working, I believe everyone here has a distraction. So for some, if for my example would be my phone, I found that simply just turning off the Wi-Fi, that, that does it for me. So I'm quite disciplined in that I can be in the same room, room with my phone. It might be on the bed or just on the desk, but there's no, you, you can't get in touch with me, I guess, because the Wi-Fi is off, the data's off. Unless it's an emergency, then a call will come through. And I'm disciplined enough to work for two hours or three hours without that distraction. For others, they might need to leave their phone downstairs. Someone might need their phone, etc. But find your distraction and diffuse them. I think that's the advice I'm trying to say. Um, because otherwise, um, procrastination will take over your time. And... Um, then you won't be managing time, it's more managing your attention. But take breaks, so if you are, um, in, a, in a sense, flagging or losing attention or just concentration, then this is the time to take a break um, and just return to the task after. Then also, if it's something that you're not enjoying, maybe change the approach. If it's a task you have to complete, change how it's done. Um, but manage distractions is an important one, and I think it comes with discipline. So if you really, like I said, if you really want to do something, it will get done. So you have to be disciplined in diffusing the distraction, removing it from the room. It might be your friends, so you might need to just say, I'll study in my room today and then I'll speak to you guys later. Um, but identify them and diffuse them. That's my advice. Number nine, this is what I did mention earlier regarding fill in the blanks. And this is something I've done since uh, GCSEs actually so my commute to school was quite long um, and normally I guess on the bus you'd see people I guess messaging some people might sleep or just listening to music but I found that time was really useful to revise so it was an hour and a half so I guess it's quite a while um, but instead of just uh, not filling in the blank so what I will reiterate is by not using this time it's not a loss so if you choose just to sit on the bus that's fine but if you also choose to sit on the bus and read your favorite book or revise or ruminate over a presentation you have in a few weeks, that's a good use of time as well. So that's what I found really useful. Um, but fill in those blanks. So they might arise spontaneously, like as we've had with coronavirus. So fill it in. Don't be idle or, um, I guess, lazy with it, but proactively fill that time, whether it's just self-care, catching up with friends, an opportunity to rejuvenate, 
like I said, revise or plan for another opportunity. Um, but that's what I'd say. So fill in the small spaces. And um, that might be an hour, a, a train journey. It could be a bus ride, an Uber drive, but fill in the blanks. So what I do in terms of combining the previous pro, uh, tip, in terms of, oh, sorry, managing the distraction. Yeah, I'm going the wrong way. Managing the distraction, what I do is, by filling in the black, blank, I reply to messages. So in the morning, in the morning commute to placement, which is like half an hour, that's when I'd reply to messages. Um, and then on the way back, I'd revise and just think about placement and the different things I'd come across. So just find what you'd like to do in that time, whether it's listening to your favorite music, reading your favorite book, but that's um, something that I found really useful. But the biggest tip I guess I could say is, we're all already able to manage time. I say this because I believe the majority of us on here are Seventh-day Adventists, or at least a revere the Sabbath or recognize that it's something that is holy, where we can't do any work, we have to rest, and it's an opportunity to enjoy the, ble to enjoy the blessings God has given us for that week. Uh, when I was younger, especially going to a school where people were quite academic, losing a day was quite hard to understand. So not being able to catch up with friends or do a bit of work, complete homework, um, at first I, quite, I found quite difficult. But as I got older, I realized this is a day to rest, a day to rejuvenate, a day to just be with family and friends. And in a sense, it's a day which shows that we already can manage time. We know we've essentially got six. So we use the week accordingly, knowing we can't do anything on Saturday. So those same inherent skills you have, you can, you can then apply to a day-to-day -day life. So if I read this mess, uh, the scripture, actually, just to embolden what I'm saying, enjoy the Sabbath. Remember the sab Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, can either you, nor your son, or daughter, nor your male or female, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. So to recap, um, firstly, be inspired by your circle. So by no means, I'm not saying at all, um, reevaluate your circle, that's not what I'm saying, but simply think, the people around you, do they respect time as much as you? Or are you inspired by them with how they can use their time and also have fun? That might be something you might want to tweak or consider. Um, as I said earlier, prioritize prioritizing. So rank your tasks in, in importance, whether it's by an app as someone might have mentioned, or simply on pen and paper. Delegate, so ask for help. You, you can't do everything. Um, with us, with, we know this, we can't do everything. We need to use those around us just to make us more better with the time management. And use the time, uh, as tip number four says. Um, adapt and be flexible. Know when, when, when you work best, know which environment that is. When you've eaten, what you need in terms of energy fuel, what is that? Have a routine, what, what things can you not compromise? What do you have to do in a day um, to get you going and get you, give you momentum for the week? Manage your distractions, whether it's having a snack every five minutes or always replying to the message that might come through, or even just the noisy um, street that you might live on the main road, maybe you might need to work in the library. So manage those distractions. Nine is an interesting one, but one that I definitely say I use, fit in the small spaces. It might not make sense to some, um, but I think it's a valuable use of time. But most importantly, enjoy the Sabbath. So that is brilliant. That's a brilliant way of time management. We, some of us, I believe, are busier on the Sabbath, maybe because of all the different, um, different um, departments they're in and having different responsibilities. But try and rest and just be thankful that you've reached the end of a week and rejuvenate and use that time to plan and prioritize and to restart. I do hope that made sense. But like I said at the start, these are, these are things that have worked for me. And these are things that I am still evolving, things that, that are still changing. Um, but I recognize there are so many other things that I'm interested to hear from those on the panel today as well. And the final objective, as I said at the start, tweaking time. So what things might you want to change? What, might think, what things might you want to refine? Um, 
This scripture, I believe, is quite powerful. So if I read it out, it's Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1 to 8. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. So that is quite deep in itself, but it shows that there is a time, there is a season for everything, but it might not all be in one go. So this is where time management comes in. But in, a set, in addition, it's also showing that the use of time might not always be positive. So sadly, there might be a time where there's a loss of something, there's anger, there's um, death, etc. This time in itself is not a positive experience. It's how we use the time um, to then better ourselves and recognize that it's a constant, um, it's a constant task. It's not something that can be done now and then is set for years to come. It's something we have to continue to refine and reevaluate. Mm. But I hope that made sense, and I hope the scriptures do just show that. God's given us the time and we should be the best stewards we can to make use of that and do as much as we can in a day and a week just to inspire those around us and better ourselves really. But yeah, that, that's me. So these are the references. I don't really know if anyone um, would like to use them, but these are some of the articles I'd read, um, especially from a stance of a medical profession in terms of how um, the use of time and having a family and work-life balance is, it can be quite difficult. So just listening to those kind of professionals and seeing how they try and manage it all was quite interesting. If there are any questions, I am, um, I will try and answer them. Fantastic presentation. Okay. Um, again, I mean, I love what you, you brought out about, you know, who's in your circle. Yeah. And um, prioritizing Prior, prioritize making a priority of prioritizing um, delegation using the time wisely and peak productivity yeah. delegation though I find can be quite yeah. a difficult one because you're imposing sometimes what you want what you need somebody else to do and they may have their time structures of course as well so but definitely um, excellent presentation um, there's some questions that we've got. And again, I'm encouraging everybody who's here with us right now, do share some questions. Um, but a question that we've got for you. Yes. Is there a difference between time management and being time conscious? I believe so. So I think time management is uh, being able to manage ahead. Um, so plan ahead. But being time conscious, I think you can lose sight of the present. So if you're always chasing time in a sense, okay, we've got five minutes, oh, we need to go now, or we've only got 10 minutes for this task, and there's, there's a, it's an easy way to become more stressed. So I think there is a fine line between, the different, um, between those two different things, but yeah, I think there's a difference. And I would veer more to managing time rather than being time conscious. But by managing time, you're inherently being time conscious. So it's arguable. Okay, okay. How, does, how, does, how, how have you found um inadequate time management how does that affect you um i think i've had loads of personal experiences of waiting and i know that it's not it's not fun especially being a kid um waiting to get picked up from school was and living so far i couldn't do anything about it and calling my dad especially and him saying he's five minutes away when it's actually 20. so i think those it, it scarred me to an extent so I think that's why I'm more proactive with how I manage my time because of my own personal experience. <laughs> Nothing against my upbringing at all, but um, yeah, that's definitely something that's, I guess, scarred me a little. Uber, Uber wasn't able to save you. Not at all. Although I do have an experience where we got picked up from school from dad's friend via a taxi, which we found out at that point <laughs> rather than <laughs> the morning. So yeah, I had an Uber experience. <laughs> So 
you know, is there anything, anything wrong with living in the moment and not planning ahead for the day? I think, again, that's a balance. So sometimes spontaneity, so interestingly enough, which is probably absolute contradictory to this presentation, but my um, New Year's resolution was to be more spontaneous, meaning just to do things in the spare of a moment with, to an extent, obviously. Um, so no, again, I think there's a balance just to get the most out of an experience. Sometimes you need to just live in that moment and just take everything it all in that particular experience. But sometimes you need to plan just in case, again, you need to involve more people into the plan, whether you're trying to juggle more than one task. Um, so no, I think there's nothing wrong with them both, but without the balance then things become, can become um, a bit wayward with how you approach time. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, you know, some of these, Hold on, wait, there's a question. Yes. Um, okay, so how do you manage time if you can't get things done in the allotted time and, keep, and stop spending too much time on that task? Oh, okay, can we break down that question? So how do you manage time? What, what, what is the root of the question, sorry? <laughs> All right, so how do you manage time if you can't get things done in the allotted time and okay. stop, stop spending too much time on the, that task? Okay, yeah, I see what you mean. So interestingly, with my prioritized prioritizing, I don't put time um, limits, I guess, on it. I guess that's the question. Mm -hmm. So uh, revision itself, it might be an hour, but I don't say spend an hour. So I think this links all into peak productivity. So you know when you're losing concentration or you know when the information or even just the task itself is not being completed as quickly as it needs to. That at that point, might, you might need to take a break. Yeah. So that when you know the productivity of what you're doing, where it might be just cleaning, washing up, and the part itself normally takes two minutes to clean. Now you're scrubbing for five minutes because you're not concentrating on that task. That should be just the, a light bulb moment thinking, okay, maybe I need a break here. So that, that for me is what I know, revision especially, if you're not concentrating or if you're um, not focused on that particular activity, then it's ineffective. So I think that can translate to quite a few other activities. So if you're not as productive as you were five minutes before, this might be the time to have a break. That would be my answer to that one. Okay, so, you know, going off of what you've said, do, do you find that you're able to concentrate well on a given task? Yeah, I think I, I might have seen, I don't know if that's a question you might ask later, but I did see a question that was just popped up on the overall chat. I think it does have a lot to do with discipline. Um, and again, you, you have to discipline yourself. So if, again, it's important. So if it's important to you, like for me, if something's important to me, it's, it's going to happen. <laughs> that's just, I, I will pursue it um, within reason, of course. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I do agree with what you're saying, Craig. I think um, it's, it's up to an individual to an extent. There's so many strategies that could make you manage time and make you complete tasks as quickly and as effectively as possible. But if you are not in that mindset to do so, it might not happen. Mm. I, don't, my, I mean, my question was leading into another, another <laughs> thought that I had. Um, you know, I'm reading a lot online recently with people saying, turn off all of the notifications on your phone. Right. Um, don't set the, the mail app to be responding within every 15 minutes or so. Okay. Take the little red dots off, um, the badge icons on the, the, the applications that you've got on your phone because those things distract a lot. Do you do you do that as well? Or because you mentioned that you you know you deal with yeah. your phone in a certain way, you can have it in the same room. How yeah. do you how do you do that? <laughs> I don't know. Um I think it's inherent to it's something that, which is what uh, my objective number one was. It's something that I've evolved over time. So starting with GCSEs, I'd had a phone then, but once the Wi-Fi is off, nothing can actually come through okay. unless someone's messaging you or calling you, which is an emergency. So most people know that in order to get, if, my, if the Wi-Fi is off, in order to get me, you have to call kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I think um, it's, it's my discipline in a sense that once it's off, for that set time, it might be two hours. I won't be using my phone. 
Mm. So sometimes I get in trouble with my mom when she's, when she's trying to get me. <laughs> and I'm actually unavailable because I'm nowhere near my phone. But I know that some people, although it's in the room, although the Wi Fi is off, I know you can get apps which block social media for an hour or so. So there's loads of things out there. They're still distracted. Um, which again, it links back to if it's important to you, if, something, if it's something you want to do at that point in time, your brain, the way you see that activity will change. So rather than it being something that you don't want to do, it's something that you want to do and complete so you can move on. Mm. And that's, that's how I see it. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. So we've got questions are rolling in now. All right. All right, so, so we've got one that was sent to everyone so everyone can see it. What yes. is the role of personality types, temperaments in managing time? Uh, major. Okay. And that's, um, that's something I've noticed in terms of my, my journey. Um, so the more, again, so you have to be careful with the word conscious, but the more disciplined or the more um, protective you are of your time, um, I guess the more you'll see product productivity change. So it's all, with my, it's all with mindset, but also with the task. So for example, I'm trying to think, like, for example, washing my car, that, that's not exactly something I enjoy doing. Mm. Um, so in a sense, that's something I put off because the task itself inhibits the, the mindset to be, okay, I want to do that. So that my, um, I guess my personality in that sense would be just to adapt. So you have to be adaptable, um, but then disciplined. But then I think... It, does your personality change regarding to a task or is it your personality that enables you to complete a task? Mm. Um, I guess that's another question in itself. But yeah, I think personality has a big role to play. Okay, okay. Now this one, you mentioned that you set your clocks 10 minutes ahead. Yes. Only, let me reiterate, only the, the <laughs> car clock. So the watch I'm wearing, it's not, it's no more time. But the clock in the car is 10 minutes past you. Okay, so before I read the question, why the clock in the car and why is that different to, to you? I know, it's a weird one. I think um, more so because that's my mode of travel. So that's normally 10 minutes is a good factor in time just for traffic. If I have to quickly come back because I've got something maybe. Um, and it, because it's driving, it's, it's, it's a mode of transport. I want to know that I've got 10 minutes spare. <laughs> Whereas on my wrist itself, it's, it's in the present. It's something that it's always on me. Um, so I'd rather not have to calculate what the actual time is. Mm, mm, I found it's quite useful. That's something I got from my dad actually. His his clock in his his clock in his car has always been 10 minutes fast. Okay, okay, okay. So you drive in the future and you walk <laughs> in the present. That's right. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Okay, so check this out. So this is the question regarding that. that. Okay. Can you explain how right. you like setting clocks faster for your time management i've tried this but uh -huh. but would just tell myself to ignore that time so i'm, I'm imagining you know you're driving you've got the clock in the car <laughs> but you've got your watch on your wrist what stops you from just saying yeah it's 10 minutes ahead but this is the real time here mm, i think for me i like to be early so uh, this is especially works for just arriving at work so it's 10 minutes fast so i need to be there at 11 30 so i can see that it's 11 40 on the clock in the car mm -hmm. so um i should be at work at this point whereas if the clock in the car said 11 30 um and it's actually 11 30 it's a bit like uh, and i'm not i'm not at work then th there's i think it's a buffer for not emotion but just for a mishap of adaptability so that's my buffer for adaptability so if there is traffic I know I have 10 minutes to spare. Whereas on, on my hand, the wrist itself, the wristwatch, um, it's something that's always with me. So time in itself is always going ahead. I think that's just how I see it. It's just more, so I'm not late to things. That's why it's ahead, rather than the watch on my wrist. But yeah, that's why. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. So what I'm really picking up is it's all about discipline. Yeah. It's all about discipline. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm not changing the time in my car so no that was not a tip of mine that was more just something that i that i use <laughs> <laughs> all right cool so here's another one um so look you're studying medicine yeah you're, you're, you're going to be in a at times a very busy environment how do you deal with competing deadlines when everything is urgent yeah 
Uh, that's, a, that's a really good question. I, this year was quite, there's quite a few assignments we had to complete. Um, and they were all in the same, there were three in the same week. Um, so what I did there, if I just break it down, is the size of it. So first of all, the size of the assignment, that helped me factor in how long it would take. Um, and that's where the checklist came in. But the checklist, in a sense, not complete um, the assignment on cancer. It was more just complete the first paragraph of this assignment. So it was bite-sized tasks. So the list, the checklists in May were extremely long. Um, so that's how I compete with deadlines in terms of writing everything out, making sure that I'm up to date with uh, where I need to be. I also get my circle involved. So my mom especially, I'm like, mom, can you set a deadline in your phone? So message me, say on the 8th of March, if I haven't completed um, half of this assignment, then there's a problem. So I make my own deadlines, basically. Mm -hmm. So the deadline itself was in, for example, the 20th of May. By um, mid-April, I would have told my mom, mom, can you message me? Um, have I, just say, T, have you finished this assignment? That's normally what she does. And then either I haven't, which I know I have what enough time to complete another month, or I have, I'm like, okay, great, next one. So for me, using your circle, again, it's a, in a sense delegating, but I'm not giving my mom the assignment, we're more giving her a time pressure. So just passing, that's how I delegate. So not necessarily a responsibility, but just allowing someone to be a part of your use of time. Mm, so that's, that's what me. Delegating to support you in. That's it, yeah. Okay. Um, do you focus on one task until it's finished or do you try to multitask? No, I am. Um, no, I don't do that. I, yeah, definitely multitask. <laughs> um, because this is for me. So although it might come across, I'm very disciplined. I, the, for example, the cancer, the, the deadline we had on like a cancer patient that we had to complete, which was 4,000 words. I could never just work on that for three weeks. Um, that I just couldn't do that. I, I needed variety. So I would be juggling different assignments at the time, but at the same time, completing the task I'd written. So first paragraph for this assignment complete, second paragraph for this research for this assignment on, ongoing, not at the same time, as in obviously not in the same space of time, but after I'd finished this one for an hour, I'd move on to the next one. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I do different things at the same time, but then that, again, that's requiring organization. So you don't lose sight of deadlines and just work. Imagine if you've got different documents open, mm -hmm. all sorts of things get involved there. But yeah, I, I definitely want to test. Okay, so another question that's coming in. Okay. In your first, out of your 10 tips. Yes. The first tip was to dealing with who's in your circle. Yes. And um, one of the points that you made was work hard, play hard. Yeah. Okay, so with that, how mm. do you effectively pre prioritize and balance your social life? Yeah. With your uni slash work life? I think I've been quite fortunate in that sense. It's something that, um, for me and my siblings, it's something that our parents have always wanted us to do. So they recognize the importance of us working really hard. But even so, even up to our school days, they always wanted us to be involved in different skill sets or different activities. So since a young age, I've had to juggle different activities, whether that be working and then violin lessons, working, netball practice. So it's something I have to say I'm very much used to. So by not if I was only working, if that's all I was doing in a week, I would be, um, it, it wouldn't be me. It's just unknown to me, basically. Mm -hmm. So if I have to break that down, how do I juggle it? Um, it's important to me. That's why it's done. So I went to uni and I take part in netball because I love netball. I have to do it. So <laughs> I find time to do it. And at the same time, I try not to compromise my study. So uh, netball practice before it was cancelled was Thursday evenings and then we had matches Monday and Wednesday. Mm. Um, the matches changed so I knew some evenings I have an hour before a game to revise. Um, some weeks there might not be a game but by planning ahead but it's important to me so for others they might want to meet friends that might be more important to complete an assignment and that's where um, the priorities might need to change. But yeah I think it's inherent. It's something that I've been doing since what seven. That's probably why it might sound like a a task that's just um, I'm well accustomed to. So the person who hasn't been doing it for so long, yeah, new for them, they've probably struggled with it for for a lot 
a long time in their life. Yes. What, what advice could you give them to maybe little principles that they could yeah. put in place to help them make it become a habit? Start small. So you might, I guess this might, this um, ambition of yours, I don't know if it's inspired by someone else and they might be doing loads of social activities and managing their work life, but start small. So whether it be um, a sewing club, that might be the social activity or a hobby that you might want to pursue. Um, join it once a week, um, fit in the time. And that's where my tip on routine comes in. So if that's something that you don't want to compromise, fit it in, it might be every Thursday evening, that's, that's always taken now. So whatever used to be on Thursday evening, how can you allot that time elsewhere? Um, so that's my advice. So just start small and then you'll, those skills are transferable. And I think like I was saying for a point 10 in terms of the Sabbath, that's, that in itself is a slot that is always present as an SBA. Um, and yet all of us are able to manage completely busy lives around it. So use that as well. Use that transferable skill, which you might not realize, to fit in um, an opportunity to meet friends every Wednesday, um, join a sports club every Tuesday, etc. But it's something we all can do. But as I might, it's, it might sound I'm saying a lot, but if you want to do it, if it's your priority, it actually will happen. Okay. That's my belief. It will. Priority. That's it. Yeah. Um, so there was that question that came in firsthand about the personality types and temperaments. Yes. Managing time. Um, there's an extension to it. Okay. So as an extension to the question, that question, this person has explained that as a sanguine, I drive more on bursts of energy as opposed to a detailed schedule. Okay. Um, so Tanisha mentioned peak productivity. Yes. And I'm trying to figure out if discipline would be maximizing my bursts or striving against my natural inclination? Oh, that's a brilliant question. Mm. Sanguine, I want you to research into personality type. So I believe that's a type of personality, Sanguine. Yeah, yeah Sanguine. Um, I think that in itself is the answer to the question. So you recognize, I think what I was trying to get across with that point is how best do you work? So if it's the bursts of activity, like I'm saying, it's quite individual to a person. So if it is bursts of 10, 20 minutes of whatever that might be, and that's when you are most effective, most productive, that in itself is discipline. So find the time to fit it in. Whereas if it's um, a, long, a longer duration of an activity, again, that's what best works for you. So I think it's not the type of work or the type of productivity. It's how best you are effective. So if that, um, for that individual, if that's how best you work, I would continue to pursue that. As long as it fits, as long as it makes sense, as in, it doesn't come across as in you're chasing time or you're trying to do everything at once. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what you mean by burst of energy, but if that's what works for you, then um, that in itself is your peak productivity. So it's about harnessing that, that energy. Yeah, definitely. Um, because if you're, I, I say flagging, but if you're losing concentration, then in my opinion, you're not going to be as productive as you are. I think I came across something that you use as in like there's 80%, 80% of your productivity is achieved within the 20% of time. So you spend more time completing a task than necessary. The 80% productivity of a task is completed with 20% of the time you spend doing it. Mm. Um, so you might be, well, most of us are spending too, too long on an activity to get, the majority of the productivity out of it so that that might be a useful point to consider let's say you know like with with um hurricanes mm. that if they could harness the energy from a hurricane they could power homes for a long period of time so it's like but if you don't yeah. harness anything it's just it just blows over and destroys everything in its path that's right so i'm guessing that it could be to do with just harnessing that energy those bursts of energy at those moments mm -hmm. to get the most productivity as you've mentioned Okay, um, so we'll look at maybe just a few more final questions, just bearing in mind regarding the time. I mm -hmm. want to say thank you for the questions that have come in so far. Yes, definitely. Um, it's made me think, especially regarding the personality types. That might be something I should look into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd love to know what that is. Very interesting, very yeah. interesting. I think with those personality types, there's about four of them. Okay. Um, you're sanguine, you're phlegmatic, choleric. Mm. Uh, I definitely do that after this. <laughs> So Tanisha, you, you know, you've, you've, you've mentioned a number of strategies 
Reflecting on those strategies you, you have for time management, is there anything you want to change or wished you had started to do earlier? Um, I mentioned an example of how when I was younger, I didn't quite appreciate the importance of the Sabbath. So that's something that has um, definitely changed and I think has made me manage time much better. Um, for me at this point in time, it actually would be delegate. So before going to uni especially, I'd, I'd pretty much be juggling everything by myself. And at points, it, it wasn't as effective. Um, but especially going to uni and everything's much more, what in the first two years, there was a lot of group work. I realized the importance of using the people around you. And again, you, use, you um, build skills in that sense as well, as in you learn how they work by collaborating. Um, so delegate, that would be something that I wish I had um, refined much earlier. Mm -hmm. Excellent. You speak a lot about your past, your past experiences. I know, I sound like a... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's more just my past, I should say academic experience, because I think that's how my management of time has exponentially increased, I think, just yeah. changing in how intense work, my workload has changed. I think my management of time has changed as well. But I should just, yeah, it's just school. That's all it is. It's nothing. I think it's fantastic. I wanted to ask you regarding that. Who, who would you say has had the most impact on the person you are today? Oh, um, I can't say who. I'd say it lit simply is my parents. They, they're different in their approaches, but they both um, push me in different ways. So, for example, if I just give two examples. Um, just being at home, especially during A-levels and GCs, it's easy to get lost in studies. And my mom would always reiterate the importance of eating, just fitting fit fit time to just eat, having fuel and um, energy food, and also doing housework, making sure everything's clean. Like you can't just study basically. So finding a balance. Similarly, my dad was quite hot on just sports and just finding time to exercise and being active. So. Um, using our skill sets and still studying. So I think my parents have, they may, they may not see it, they may not see it that way, but how they brought us up, that's, that's why I'm like this for sure. I can't say anything else. And just having, being the oldest, I think it's made me, made me a bit more responsible. <laughs> that's got a role to play as well. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Lastly, the, the last question. Um, out of everything discussed today, what is the most important? What is the mo what is the most important for the people listening to take away, and why? Right. Um, in closing, I think the biggest thing I'd want everyone, if possible, to take away is time is short, and I think um, twenty twenty has showed that. So if we can utilize the time we are blessed with from God in the most effective way possible, I think. Um, not only will we feel better in ourselves, but would inspire those around us as well. So just for me, the, the one thing I'd say is you like use it wisely, utilize it, get creative, um, but use it. Yeah. Mm. That's that's what I'd say. Okay, okay. Any books, anything that people oh. can go away and study about time management? In terms of me, um, it's the, the third objective I suggested in the presentation. Self-reflection. So nothing resourceful in that sense. I, I can't say I do know any books in that sense. But um, like I was saying, time management is something that you continually evolve and your life will change. Um, people around you will change. Um, the intensity of your life will change. But if you can con continually refine how you manage time, it might not be setting your clock 10 minutes fast. It might not be that. It might be something completely different. But um, I think just continually refining your current use of time. That would be my resource. Mm. Um, but or just even just re preparing for this presentation, typing in time management, as someone might have suggested earlier, there's so many apps out there. Industries thrive of being effective. So there's so many, there's so much money in this industry, in this skill set. So you, there won't be any shortage of resources at all. Mm. So I think everyone will be able to find something. Thank you very much. No um, we can do, it's been an excellent presentation. So you can see that the, the impact of time management that you've implemented in putting it together has definitely paid off. 
<laughs> bro. For everybody who's who's been part of the presentation today, we thank you for your questions and they've been much appreciated. And um, again, Tanisha, thank you very much for everything that you presented today. Thank you, Greg. Um, could you just say a word of prayer in closing for everybody who's watching um, to encourage them as well at this time? Of course. Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to share the blessings you've um, given me. I ask that you'll be with everyone on Zoom today and help us to be better stewards of our time. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Um, for, so thanks again, Tanisha. Um, mm -hmm. Very grateful. All the best with your studies as thank you continue. You. Um, for everybody who's on, on the Zoom channel right now watching, just a reminder that there'll be no program tomorrow. Um, we will be having book club eight o'clock on Thursday, looking at a thousand shall fall. And um, on Friday, we've got study Bible study, which will be taking place at eight o'clock. And that will be looking at um, America in Bible prophecy. So I wish you all have a great evening and um, we'll see you all soon. Thank you.